Now we will talk about the benign tumors of the auricle. So the benign tumors of the auricle, we already summarized them. What are the different benign tumors of the auricle? The first one is the preauricular sinus or cyst. So the preauricular sinus or the cyst, pre means before auricle is the pinna or the auricle. So this is the uh, cyst or the sinus which is present in the front of the auricle. So preauricular sinus or cyst is result, it forms as a result of the faulty union, faulty union of hillocks of the first and second brachial arches during the development of pinna. Brachial arches are the arches that are responsible for the formation of the pinna. So when there is faulty fusion of these first and second brachial arches, it leads to the formation of preauricular cysts or sinuses. Here, this is the uh, site for the preauricular sinus or cyst. As you can see, it's preauricular, so small opening in front of the cross of the hallux. That's the site for the preauricular sinus, one commonest site. These are the brachial arches whose faulty fusion leads to the development of preauricular sinus. These are very small pit uh, fault type, very small pinpoint uh, sinus or cyst, not very big. Cysts are the fluid filled sac and sinuses are small uh, cavities, so it can be a cyst or the sinus. The clinical presentation you can see it's a pitfall uh, preauricular cyst or sinus, not a very a, a big tumor, so very small uh, pitfall sinus or the cyst. And it is due to the faulty fusion of first and second brachial arches. Next important uh, benign tumor of the auricle is the sebaceous cyst. Sebaceous is the, uh, these are the cysts which are developed from the sebaceous gland. These are the glands which produce the oil, sebaceous uh, glands produce the oil. So cysts are the swellings that develop from the sebaceous gland and they are filled with the oily secretions. This is very commonly present behind the ear lobe. So this is the ear lobe. Behind the ear lobe, you commonly find the sebaceous cysts. And then the other common side, this is the post-auricular sulcus. Here on the post-auricular sulcus also, you find the sebaceous cysts. This is the clinical presentation of the sebaceous cyst. Treatment of the sebaceous cyst is the surgical excision or surgical removal of the cyst. Next is the dermoid cyst. Dermoid cyst, they have very important characteristic. They develop from the germ cell. So the in the dermoid cyst or dermoid uh, growths, usually we find the hair or the nails because of the development of these dermoid cysts from the germ cell. That's the, you can see the dermoid cyst is the rounded mass over the upper part of the mastoid. Mastoid is the bone present on the back side of the ear. You can easily feel if you put the finger, the mastoid bone. On top of this mastoid bone, the dermoid cyst develop and these are the rounded mass. Here, that's the clinical presentation of the dermoid cyst. You can see very clearly it's the mastoid bone. On top of this mastoid bone, we have the dermoid cyst. 
Then the keloid. What is keloid? Keloid is the scar tissue. After the healing of the wound, there is a scar tissue that is formed that is known as the keloid. Raised scar tissue. Here you can see this is the keloid the keloid. It's the scar tissue of the healed wound that is, stays there and it's usually overgrowth of the scar tissue and it's beyond the actual uh, wound. So this is the keloid here. Very clear picture showing the keloid. Now the next P9 tumor is the hemangiomas. Hemangiomas is the tumors of the blood vessels and these are congenital tumors. So you, they are present at birth. So newborn babies usually you see them uh, in the newborn babies. These are the congenital tumors and the important feature of these uh, hemangiomas is usually they start subsiding or become Coming uh, faint or disappearing within the first six months after birth. So, uh, uh, but sometimes very not very often they can stay, and you can see some color there. So the capillary hemangiomas, two type. We have capillary hemangiomas, and then we have cavernous hemangiomas. The capillary hemangiomas. This is the um, picture showing capillary hemangiomas develop from the capillary very small blood vessels like capillaries there is collection of blood on in those capillaries and and it gives the reddish appearance like this so capillary sized blood vessels overgrowth or dilation and port wine stain port wine stain the name comes of this Port wine is the color of the port wine or from the Portugal. That's why this name is common. So capillary hemangiomas and then we have cavernous hemangiomas. These are the hemangiomas which are developed from the endothelial line spaces which are filled with the blood. So we have endothelial line spaces and when the blood vessels become dilated in those spaces and those dilated blood vessels they are filled with blood and you can see it gives very bright red appearance or the color. These are congenital type of tumors and they slowly start disappearing or fading up usually within the first six months. Then the papilloma and the wart, which are the another B9 tumor, these can be a tufted growth, which is the bunch-like growth, which is very common example of that bunch-like growth. We can say it's a wart that can occur. Viral warts are very common. They can develop in different parts of the body. So they are in the form of the wart or tufted growth, or they are flat gray plaque. This is the presentation of the papilloma or the wart. Then we have cutaneous horn. Cutaneous is for the skin. Horn is the appearance of the horn of the bull or the uh, buffalo. We can say it's a papilloma with heaping up of keratin. When there is heaping up or building up of the keratin, which is a protein in on the skin that forms the cutaneous horn. And if we see the clinical presentation, that's the cutaneous horn and is resemblance with the horn gives it the name of cutaneous horn. So it's the heaping up or building up of the keratin, which is the protein. Keratoacanthoma. Keratoacanthoma, it is in the form of the raised nodule with central crater. Here you can see it's the nodule with central 
creator and his creator a canthoma and clinical presentation very nice clear picture of kerato a canthoma you can see the raised nodule or swelling with central crater the neurofibroma as the name show it from the nerve fibers peripheral nerve fibers and is the developed from the sheath of the peripheral nerve and one disease in which we have multiple neurofibromas are present and is called the von Recklinghausen disease the site of the uh, uh, presence of neurofibroma in the external ear is the uh, this we can say below the hallux or this is the helical fossa this here area is the fossa of the hallux and it's usually present in this fossa it's non-tender it's not tender and it's a firm swelling you can see the neurofibroma here and depending on the growth how big it is you can see sometimes if it grows bigger it can completely occlude the external audit or external auditory canal opening and cause obstruction So just summarizing all about the B9 tumors of the auricle, these are all the tumors which we discussed. We talked about neurofibroma, dermoid cyst, keratoacanthoma, cutaneous horn, sebaceous cyst, keloid. Then we discussed about papilloma and what preauricular sinus or cyst, and then hemangioma which can be capillary or cavernous hemangioma.